this is Todd from TT Bike Fit, and in this video we're going to look at the uh, top women's running technique at the Boston Marathon in 2013. Here we have the uh, first three women coming through. This is mile 24 approximately on the course. There's some common aspects that we can see to the running form of all of these women. So one thing that's going to become very clear here is the amount of hip extension that we're seeing in all these top women runners. Now they're all running um, you know, mid five minute per mile pace here. Uh, 226 to 230 marathons on this day. But we can see how far the hip is extended. And you can also see the, the knee drive on the forward foot or on the forward leg. The reason that these women are able to run as fast as they are is not because they're running at essentially any higher of a cadence as we see in their stats. They're all running about a 95 uh, cadence, plus or minus. There are some 90 and, and 100 cadence runners, um, but it's, it has to do with the distance they're flying per stride, essentially. And that comes from three real factors. Range of motion, and that's what we're seeing with the hip extension here. Range of motion, a stable foundation, so we don't see that there's any collapse or energy loss or leakage going on with these women as they land on each stride. So that essentially allows them to store energy to propel them into the next cycle of the stride. And then we go to the third characteristic which is really resilience. So by that we mean that you know much of the force and momentum these women are able to generate on each stroke or each stride comes from stored potential energy here in their connective tissues and that as they land essentially contracting the spring here no energy is leaking through the core and torso and as they pass over the foot the spring essentially expands again and that along with momentum from the forward knee drive and pendulum motion of the forward swing of the forward lower leg provides them with the ability to fly essentially uh, a very long distance per each stride so you know up to around five feet per stride is the distance these women are traveling and I, that's quite a bit um, especially considering the stature of most of these women are small and certainly the fact that they're very lightweight helps with all of this. Um, there's no doubt that, that you know, to the, to the extent that the runner has resilience and is able to store energy, that's going to be more effective in propelling a lighter body versus a heavier body. But we also can't have the energy leaking through collapsing of the body through through the core essentially collapsing or the 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 hips or or shoulders all the energy imparted by the landing needs to be stored up as potential energy and released so the third point going back to what the third point here is is that's that resilience it's that that elasticity of the tissues in that less active muscle contractions and more passive release 
of elasticity to drive these women forward. Next and fourth, we have uh, American Shalane Flanagan, uh, Olympic bronze medalist, three-time Olympian, etc., coming up the road, and we can see the same characteristics. In fact, she has a slower cadence than the other woman. She's actually flying further with each stride. Just an incredibly athletic running style. So we can see here what we're talking about in that extension. And this is, you know, typical, these are typical gazelle runners if they go back to my video from last year, the gliders versus gazelles, in that, you know, we see this at takeoff, we see this type of posture here, this type of arrangement. Very high knee, the great amount of hip extension out the back. And the foot, the lower leg, has not yet swung forward typically at the time of toe off. So, right as toe off occurs, that's where we see the lower leg begin to swing forward, and we see the, the full degree that she's able to open her stride there. So this is, you know, a, a fantastic range of motion. And if you don't uh, believe me, take a video of yourself and see where you are on this scale. Um, it's it's not easy to have this amount of range of motion. Also, she comes through with a very high heel, so it's essentially making the pendulum of the recovering leg very short, allowing it to swing through faster, and then opening up that lower part of the leg after toe off to help provide additional momentum to propel her forward. And it's just you know, quite amazing the height and flight that occurs for each stride. Remember, this is mile 24 of the marathon. So look at that pose, and that's what equals speed. Let's go back and look at her again. And one thing I want everybody to forget about is how what part of the athlete's foot hits the ground first you're going to see with most of these girls that it's going to be their heel that hits first but that's not where they're applying weight in every case the foot is at least flat if not forward by the time weight is applied and on my other videos people just go nuts with this heel striking versus forefoot striking versus midfoot striking and what, what these girls are doing is they're heel touching, they're not heel striking. So look, heel touching, okay? The heel has actually touched the ground but there's no weight until that point. So people need to stop focusing on this notion of you know heel striking is bad. Yeah, heel striking is bad if you're actually applying weight on your heel out in front of your body, that's going to stop you, but it means nothing if it's the first part of the shoe that touches. Now, Ana Felix here from Portugal 
was having a little bit of trouble and she was actually going backwards at this point. And if you look at her running style, she's not getting the same type of extension. You can see that there's a lot more collapsing going on if we look at that with each stride on landing that she's definitely leaking some energy here. Now you can see the collapsing, the bending of her upper body, tilting of her hips, and so she's not getting the same amount of flight, the same amount of energy return for each stride, and so she ends up finishing um, relative to the other runners that she's close to at this point, um, a notable amount behind them, even though there's only two miles or so to the finish. Now, coming up here, we have U.S. runner Kara Goucher. You'll see that at least this point in this run, she is using a different running style than we see the other women using. She is exhibiting more of a glider style as opposed to the typical gazelle style we see with these elite runners. The main difference being, if you go back again to my video from last year, in that the amount that she has opened her stride at toe-off so that her foot is much, her foot on the recovering leg is much further forward. Her lead leg is open and there's less, so there's less lift in general and less flight in general. But she's using a fairly high turnover here of about 100 strides per minute. So she's traded turnover here for flight distance. So just to compare her to her teammate at Oregon, so you'll notice the uh, difference in the lead leg position at toe off. They've got they're getting similar amounts of extension out the back, which is the point again we made last year that you still need hip extension regardless of what style you run. But here you'll see that she's already swung the pendulum essentially open versus Shalane is saving that for after the takeoff. So quite a bit of difference there. And you'll see that Kara's already down and Shalane lands there. So that's the difference between the 100 and the 90 strides that we have each of these athletes doing. It's that Shalane is spending much more time in the air. Here's another runner with a very similar technique to Shalane. Maddie Perez from Mexico. Again, very incredibly athletic running style. And once again, there is the typical posture or confirmation that we see at takeoff with these gazelle style runners. Immediately after takeoff again we see that leg swing forward. So you can see just how similar the style is between uh, these two runners. One difference is just how much higher Shalane's heel is here on the recovery. I think that's that's a minor point. And what really matters in all these, you know, beyond the fine details, is the macro details in that these runners have those three features that we talked about: the range of motion, the stability, 
and the resilience. And, you know, somebody, if I hadn't said anything, would say, oh my gosh, she's heel striking. Well, you know, once again, she's heel touching. And I, I just hope this dispels the, um, you know, the notion of the importance of what part of the foot hits the ground first, okay? It really doesn't matter. It's a fine detail. The point is you just don't want to be breaking yourself, and you're not breaking yourself if you're lightly touching the rear part of your shoe first. There's where the weight is applied. So uh, let's forget about that and you know focus on the things that are really important. So I wanted to compare here to some age group athletes. And you're going to see that you know with these athletes, I'm certainly not picking on anybody here, but you just don't have the same type, the same range of motion, the same flight distance that you're seeing in these top pros, you know, and, and there, therein lies the difference. See that there's just not nearly as much clearance above the ground. We don't see the hips open nearly as much. But that said, this pack of athletes here are all running in the, the mid to high 240s. So we're talking about sub 630 pace here. And, you know, there's already a big difference in the way these folks look versus the way these top pros look. You know, it varies certainly, but the point being that, that you know, then you take it down to a more average runner at, a, at an eight minute or slower pace and the difference is going to be dramatic. So I'm trying to make a point here that, you know, besides just going out and putting your miles in, it probably makes a lot more sense to spend time working on your mobility, working on your functional strength, working on your resilience rather than just doing mile after mile because it doesn't matter you know how much you build your aerobic engine essentially, how much you improve that you aren't going to be able to run faster unless you can move the performance of your body towards what we see these women doing here. Uh, you simply aren't going to be able to run faster if you aren't able to increase that range of motion, aren't able to increase that resilience, and aren't able to improve your stability so that those other two things can happen. So thanks for watching and we will be looking at the uh, top men at Boston 2013 soon.